Look at what's arrived. It's a big Siglon box. What is it? Do you know? Comments down below. You typed the comment yet? Great, we'll open it up now. This was supplied to me by Rob Tabby Technologies. Here's my local Siglon distributor in New Zealand. I've been meaning to get one of these things for a while. It would have been nice to buy this much sooner. But I had to save up for it. Sometimes when you want something, you just have to save up and, and just, you know, be patient. Patience is key. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Do you know what it is yet? I really need to stop saying that because do you know what it is yet is a phrase that Rolf Harris used to use in new way. It just always pops into my head. Let's get the bag. It's the SSA 3021X Plus. So this is the 2.1 gigahertz spectrum analyzer. Now I've already got other spectrum analyzers. I've got the Rodan's Fault CME 200 up there, which has been amazingly held up by my shelf for quite a time. That's a really handy thing to have. This will hopefully fit in my shelving up here, just in front of me. And I don't know, I may even move the CME 200. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that bit yet, but I wanted this particular unit. It's got a tracking generator and stuff like that, which the CMU does not have. And so it's got some extra features which the CMU just can't do, so that's why I wanted to get this particular unit. A bit more functional. So power cable, USB cable, and Rob also threw this in for me. He asked me if I wanted one. I said, yeah, sure, that would be handy. It's a uh, end connector. Let's pop out the cables carefully without ripping the plugs off. So it's an N to BNC cable. I think it's actually a standard Siglant cable, but I think this is the one Siglant, so I'm not sure. Maybe Rob can comment down below. This is calibrated five weeks ago. So I'll be using this thing in some upcoming projects, I'm sure. There's a few things I actually want to do with this, so I may do videos about those in the future, but uh, yeah, watch out for it appearing on the back of my shelf. The only problem is my shelf is, well, it's here, right? So, yeah, I'll do this. This is CME 200. It's amazingly supported by the shelf, like I said. So I've got my 3065X here. I've got the 1020XE here. I've got these tested LCI meter over here. I've got an audio control real-time spectrum analyzer here, which is an audio one. And then, down here, we've got my Siglant STS2104X plus the STG2042X and I've got a Keysight DSOX1102G, which Keysight um, gave to me. That was the prize when I did the test to impress a few years ago. Four years ago now, something like that. I actually won that from Keysight, so that's, that's it's there. And the reason I have this on here as well as the Siglon is because they do decoding a little bit differently. So the serial decoding, this will give you like raw hex values and you know raw ASCII. Was this will actually tell you it's a shift key or an escape key or something like that, or an enter button. It will actually tell you that in the decoding. So sometimes that difference can be handy. Sometimes you want to know this one, you know, the output this signal gives. Sometimes that's the one you want. But sometimes this one's handy. So that's why I have this up here. But what I'm hoping to do is maybe shift things around a little bit and put this spectrum analyzer where the key site is. Um, I'd still like to keep the key site here because it is handy to have. But to be honest, I don't use it that much. I use mostly the signal here. So it does get used, but I usually just sort of default to using the, the signal. Mainly because it's touch screen and I've got the mouse control, oh, which I've just dropped, and I've got the mouse control on it and stuff like that, which is more convenient. And it's also got higher bandwidth, so that does get used as well. So I might put it on a shelf in here somewhere and just have it so I plug it in when I need to use it, but um, that's still something I do want to keep around. But I've got to try and squeeze this in that gap. Has anybody got a shoehorn I can borrow? Right, let's power this out for the first time. Now I've put a connector on here in preparation, converting it straight down to BNC. Now actually what I want to do is convert to one of these. 
Now this is a DC block. I've actually just purchased some N type DC block. They're good insurance. If you have a spectrum analyzer or anything that is not tolerant of a DC input, put a DC block on it. Now this actually says on the front panel here, it can do 50 ohms, right, reference input, maximum 30 dBm and 50 volts DC. So this actually is DC tolerant. But it's getting one anyway. Because now it's even more tolerant of DC. And when I actually get the right one, this will be a lot shorter. It won't stick out as much. Anyway, let's power this thing up for the first time. So standby power is about four and a half watts. Let's look at the hoppy meter here. See how long it takes to boot up. So I was actually quite torn between getting this and getting the SVA version, the Vector Network Analyzer, because I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. This is like half the price of the SVA. You know, that's the major incentive there is that I could afford this, couldn't afford the SVA. But I've still got a lot of learning to do on these because, say, I've been using old special analyzers, you know, CMU 200, which is quite limited in some ways. I wanted to get something more modern. It's got the right date. The time is wrong. <laughs> System. Um, date and time. Touch screen, might as well use that. Um, year, month, day. I think I prefer day, month, year. That one there. And I want to set the time. I wonder if it's got 24 hour time. Actually, how's that? It is actually 2222. How's that for timing? <laughs> so there you go, time's updated. So frequency, let's do 1 megahertz, I suppose. Yep, that's right, towards the bottom end there. See, that's why you get that big spike because it's zero effectively. Okay. Okay, let's do um, a different frequency. I'm going to wind it up. I can do that. Start frequency, center frequency, and so on. I think I'm going to have to peel the screen off. What do you reckon? Center frequency, 1 gigahertz instead. And let's do span of... Oh, let's do 50 megahertz. Stock is updating fairly well. Amplitude settings, attenuators are on. Manual attenuator, so you can set that to what you want. Okay, preamp off and on. So if you want to actually receive things remotely, which is not connected directly onto the, the port on the front here, then you can um, use the preamp. So if you want to use like an antenna, like I've got here, like connect an antenna up to it, and then you can use the preamp and make it a bit easier to pick stuff up. Measurements, occupy bandwidth. Nice. So this has got usually. A whole bunch of options which are available. So it's like um, temporary licenses, so you can try things out. So it gives you a lot of options which you wouldn't normally have, at least initially. Next, spectrum monitor. It's a waterfall diagram. That's always handy. So I'm going to show it much right now because there isn't much. So I just hooked up my Marconi uh, 2022D our signal generator. I've set it to 500 megahertz and I've just adjusted this to be 500 megahertz. You can see the waterfall diagram here showing the bandwidth and stuff there, the actual usage. So let's have a bit of a play around with this thing, shall we? Manual bandwidth, resolution bandwidth. Let's narrow that right down. It, does, it definitely slows down when it gets like 1 kilohertz. I think I'm doing a 100 megahertz bandwidth here. So let's change the span to be 5 megahertz. Actually, helps speed things up a bit. Still. Good resolution there. So let's go 1 megahertz. That's still way more than it needs. It's getting faster and faster as you'd expect. Let's do um, 100 kilohertz. Okay, so there is the Marconi. Now, this does actually have modulation on it as well. Now it's modulating 30%. So let's bring the span down. Let's do uh, 30 kilohertz then. Let's do that. And we'll change the bandwidth here. Oh, it's the auto. Yes, maybe I'll leave it in auto. It actually made a decent choice. So there you can see the lobes. 
it's IA modulated, but uh, it's a manual again. Let's bring this down or slow it down a lot. I don't need to get that low. Let's do 10 hertz, and there you go, you can really see it just there. So that's working quite nicely. And obviously, the sacrifice with having a resolution is that you uh, lose speed. So it's a compromise. That's fine. Seems to be working fine. Happy with that. So, you ready for the screen peel? I should really do a screen peel, it's kind of in the way. Here we go. Let's take a little. Yeah, that's better. So, I'll just switch straight into the measurement modes here, and what I'm looking at now is harmonics. So it's actually telling you the harmonic frequencies and how much down they are based on carrier. This might mention DBC, DB relative to carrier. Right, so we've got 500 megahertz as a reference, which is minus 20 dBm, which is what we've got set. And its first harmonic is minus 39 dBc and then minus 55 or so dBc. So that's all working alright. I mean, it's, that's a nice little feature. If I did some averaging, it would probably smooth it out a little bit. Gives you a bit of a more stable reading. Got all these little features in here which I'm sure would be really handy to know and get used to. I've got a lot to learn yet on this thing and part of it is going to be remembering to use the touch screen more than anything else. Auto tune, see what auto tune does. There you go, found it, that works alright. And it's set the span to 40 megahertz and resolution bandwidth 300 kilohertz. What else have we got in here? System. Got used to using the touch screen, this thing. Hmm. Why is that taking so long to come up? That's interesting. System. System. Power on preset. Last use settings. Okay, cool. Probably bored you enough with this. I'm going to play this thing for a few days.